Now, this Friday is World Mental Health Day, which aims to raise public awareness of mental health issues across the globe. All week we're going to be revisiting our Time to Talk campaign, talking openly about mental illness and the treatment, preventions and recovery models available. Joining us this morning to discuss this are former Cork hurler and mental health campaigner Connor Cusack and CEO of Mental Health Ireland, Orla Barry. You're both very welcome, guys, Thank this you. morning. Thanks, Connor, man. you're welcome back. We've got a great response the last time you were brilliant, on. Brilliant. It's great um, to be here. I'm glad you're back. Do you think we've... I'm going to be very rude, Orla, and talk oh, to Connor first, but... Perfectly fine. Have we moved on? Have we... Like, we did our Time to Talk campaign and we got a huge response from it. And I wonder if, if we have moved forward, because whenever we discuss this on the show and we ask our viewers at home, are they suffering from stigma because of mental illness, they resoundingly say yes. So I wonder, is it translating to you know, people on the ground, people in their homes? Yeah, look, I think it's, it's moved forward, but only a very, very, a very small bit. Yeah. You know, there's, I see it in my travels all around the country and all around the world that there's an immense hunger, an absolute immense hunger amongst amongst people for information in this area, but also for hope because very often the caricature of a person that's experiencing some difficulty with their mental health, it's a negative, it's a negative image and mm -hmm. I suppose that's why I kind of started the, 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 my involvement in it to try and portray that, you know, a person can have an experience with their, with their mental health, but that they can endure it, survive it, not alone survive it, but they can actually emerge out the other side and thrive again in their world. So it's improved, but like, you know, why is it that only a very, very small portion of people that are experiencing difficulty with their mental health get the, get the support? You know, I broke my wrist a couple of weeks ago. I didn't hesitate in going to the doctor and into mm -hmm. the hospital to get it looked at. But why, why is it that only, I think, is it 10 to 15 percent of people get support and help when they're struggling with some aspect of their mental and health? Those and those figures the main, are even, even lower when it comes to men, especially young men. Definitely. And, yeah. and, and, and the main reason is the stigma and taboo that still is test, mm -hmm. which what is a very, very common human experience. Um, I'm, I'm going to bring Orla Barry mm -hmm. in here. Orla, you are, you are the CEO. Of, uh, of Mental Health Ireland, but you've been working in this area pretty much all your adult life. I have, I have indeed. Um, it, it, it does look like we've made a kind of a, we, we've taken two steps forward uh, uh, um, in the last couple of years, albeit, as Connor says, mm -hmm. maybe we've taken one step back. But the, the progression in your lifetime of observing this mm -hmm. has been quite dramatic in that. There is much more acceptance, there is an understanding that everybody can have mental health issues and in fact most of us will experience them yeah. at some stage during the course of our lives. Now if, we can, if we've got that acknowledgement and that acceptance, how do we convert that into people actually doing something about it? Okay, and I think absolutely and I think one, one of the things that Mental Health Ireland is really trying to communicate is that mental health is everybody's issue and no more than we have to mind our physical health we have to mind our mental health and um, we have a plan to protect campaign this week which is about what are the ways that everybody um, can protect their mental health and there's there's five things to do and it's to connect to actually connect with other people and um, to be active to take notice and I think in in mental health it really is the the about learning to tune in to what's happening in yourself to 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 your own experience in in a way that we become more able to manage our feelings our thoughts um, our moods um, to keep learning um, is is and, and challenging ourselves and to give um, one one of the, the the very strong messages in terms of well-being is about giving to others and being concerned for others does a huge amount for ourselves. Can we? Uh, these are all very positive things, but can we use that in, on the other side of that and yeah. and and say if we notice that somebody in our circle is not connecting, is not active, is not taking mm. notice, has mm. stopped learning and isn't giving anymore, mm. that these are very positive, in, or sorry, very negative indications yeah. that we should sit up and take notice of. Absolutely. And, and I think the, the, you're absolutely right that the, in, in very simple ways, the being considerate of others, um, knowing when, when you see somebody has become maybe unwell in a way that they actually need to seek help. It's about intervening and, and just being able to say, look, to be, to be be concerned and say, look, um, what's happening? Um, do you need to actually get help with this one? Connor, did, did, mm. did, uh, did you experience all five of those or any of those when you were going through your issues? Uh, you know, I suppose I became an expert to concealing the difficulties that I was experiencing because, mm. you know, that was 17 or 18 years ago and there was zero discussion about, about mental health or emotional well-being or depression at that time, you know. But what we need to realise, though, is that anybody that's in distress 
who wants to be able to share their story. You know, my Angelo, the American poet, says, there's no greater agony than the bearing of an untold story within you. So anybody that is wants to share, but they won't do it until they feel the safety to be able to do so. And that's why it's so important that we normalize the conversation. Because does this myth, like, does this myth that boys don't talk? I can assure you that boys are well able to talk. They talk to me and, they, and, and, and it's incredible their emotional intelligence. So, you know, that's, that's the key that we create that environment where a person that feels in distress can be able to come forward and share their story and get whatever support it is. But that won't happen until they feel the safety to do so. I like this take though, Orla, that we need to take responsibility for our mental yeah. health. Just as, you know, we have an obesity epidemic, yeah. we have a diabetic epidemic, people need to get exercise, eat better, take your five a day. That if we don't take care of our mental health, you know, we could end up in trouble. And we need to be, it's not, it's not just at the point where you get into trouble, it's preventing that happening. Yes, and it's um, the, the, the it's very much about no more than we're, we're becoming more aware um, of, of lots of things in our life. It's really just becoming aware that there are ways um, of actually protecting our mental health and the things we can do to, 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 to ensure that we're ensuring that we're in the, in, in the, best, the best state that we can be um, and that we're really taking the time to, um, to enhance our, 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 our mental health and our well-being. And do okay. you think we're doing well on the, the resources when people do reach out to look for the help? Is it there? I think there's difficulties in, in, in terms of people knowing where to go yeah. and um, the, the particularly in, 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 in when people are very unwell are, are in a crisis um, and that, that the, the joining up, how, how our services join up um, between sort of counsellors, GPs and the specialist mental health services, there's still room for improvement. Just I think that's go, very fair to say. Yeah. Connor, <laughs> apart from uh, you know, the fact that you shared your story, but you're actually, you're taking it on the road, you're in, uh, you leave here and you go to the Stryker Corporation in Limerick, We'll be talking to about 900 people. Uh, you're opening an art exhibition uh, in Dundalk uh, tomorrow. Thursday, you're in Westport. And then Friday, you're in either Galway or Letterkenny or both. Or both. Yeah. I'd say yeah. to be both, knowing Connor. So you know what? It's, it's a real privilege to be a part of this new, fresh conversation that's opened up in the area of mental health. But you know, the, the Persian poet Hafiz wrote a couple of thousand years ago, and it is apt today as it was then. He said, jump to your feet, wave your fists. Threaten and warn the world that your heart can no longer live without real and authentic love. If we truly want to embrace the mental health and emotional well-being challenges of our people, we need to approach it with real and authentic talking, listening and most of our love. The dream that dwells within the heart of every human being is to belong unconditionally and to love unconditionally. And we all, all of us together, have a sacred responsibility to ensure that for as many people as possible, that dream can become a reality. And when that happens, I can guarantee you, our people will be far, far healthier in the world. Well, I don't Connor, think we can add so anything much, to no. that. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank, thank you, Orla.